Sam Sulix doing his cardio all wrong. Coach Greg, in today's video, Sam Sulix doing his cardio all wrong. And so I'm making this video to explain to you how you can do it all right. And so the first thing I want to say is I'm not cookbook on the guy. He's encouraging everyone to do his cardio. And so I do believe he's doing a better job than almost anyone on YouTube. But I want to make sure he explains it right. And remember, Sam Sulik was previously on a bulk, but he's currently cutting. And so this information, it's going to apply to most people people who are trying to lose weight. Now it's actually a normal hour. It's only 7.30. And so notice he's now waking up at 7.30. He's got a lot of shit to do. And to me, this is amazing. It's much better to wake up at the same time every day than to stay up way past your bedtime, getting your work done, and then waking up afternoon doesn't make sense. And so waking up at 7.30, going about your day, getting your work done after starting cardio, that to me is an excellent idea. But I've got some shit to do today. So to save time, instead of actually driving to the gym to do my cardio, seated bike in the kitchen. Think of it, he's driving 30 minutes to and from the gym every single day, all to do 30 minutes of cardio. That's literally doubling the time that it takes to get his cardio done. And by having a simple piece of equipment at home, he can do his cardio first thing in the morning without worrying about it. And if you don't have this equipment, just go outside, go for a quick walk. And before you know it, you've got your cardio, your steps in for the day faster than last time. Sometimes it can be circumstantial. I wouldn't tell somebody who Cook. is super busy that they have to drive, just really scrunch up their routine. I mean, it can be Cook. difficult to add. And so Sam understands that he gets it. Not everyone devotes their life to lifting weights and doing cardio. Some people have jobs, they're busy, they have a family, they can't devote driving to and from the gym every single morning to get in their cardio. But at the same time, he enjoys going to the gym. He likes running into his friends, talking to people, perhaps his fans. And so why not go to the gym? Why not make an outing? If you love the gym as much as Sam does, there's nothing wrong with separating your cardio from your weights. And in fact, the research backs this up. If you're trying to be good at both lifting weights and doing cardio, it's better to separate your workouts by at least eight hours. If you do cardio and weights at the the same time like I do, one of them is going to suffer. You're not going to have as much energy and a stamina and you perhaps won't go as hard as you should be on one or the other. But for me, it's not a problem. I can do my cardio and weights at the same time because I'm fit. I've been doing cardio for years. I train my entire body at the same time and do an hour of cardio. I'm in the gym for perhaps two and a half hours and have plenty of energy start to finish. You know, ideally, every morning, fasted or unfasted. It really, I couldn't care less. And should you be doing your cardio fasted or unfasted? Sam says it doesn't matter. It doesn't the matter. knows it doesn't matter. Whether you do your cardio fasted or unfasted, at the end of the day, it's calories in, calories out. And so it's not going to make any difference in terms of how much fat you lose at the end of the day, whether you're doing your cardio fasted or fed. However, if you're going faster than last time, you're an athlete, you're trying to get better at what you're doing, and you do your cardio fasted in particular if you do longer bouts of cardio. Sam only does 30 minutes and he does so at a fairly slow pace. If you're doing an hour plus like Coach Greg and you're not eating, you might not have the energy to push the power that you want. And so if you're doing a lot of cardio, I'd rather see you consume carbs before going to the gym. And so if you skip meal one in favor of doing cardio and you don't eat till later, you just skipped your first opportunity to help yourself build muscle. Think of it. You need protein amino acids to build the muscle in your body. And if you don't offer them those amino acids, you skip meal one, then how are you going to build muscle? It would be like having a bunch of carpenters ready to build your house, but you didn't bring the nails nor the wood. And so they're standing there wondering what you're doing. Once the cardio is complete, Sam then consumes some egg whites, some protein. And so that is now the time that those carpenters can start building the muscles in the body. But why wait? Why not consume some protein right away? It doesn't take much, perhaps 30 grams of protein, a little bit, and in doing so, that offers you the ability to maximize your ability to build muscle. And remember, Sam Sulik is on a cut, only consuming 2,500 calories in a severe deficit. It's much harder to not only build muscle, but to even keep it. My advice to Sam would be to consume those egg whites 
first thing in the morning, or perhaps at least drink a scoop of protein powder, of which you can get from Hostile Supplements, or of course, you can get it from Coach Greg. We offer a variety of protein powders you can mix in a shake, mixes up very thick, or can be used in baking. Code Greg, 10% off. Click the link in the description. I'll do it faster when I'm cutting, just because I don't want to, you know, eat a bunch of food right now. I want to save it for at least a little bit later in the day. Many people do that. It's known as intermittent fasting. I am personally not a fan of it, although if it works for you, there's nothing wrong with it. But the problem is it's more difficult to put on muscle when you're only eating in a small window than when you're eating in a larger window. Think of the carpenter analogy. If your workers are only at the house for eight hours a day in comparison to 16, are they not going to build up that house a little bit slower? Of course they are. And so why not optimize your ability to build muscle by optimizing the amount of meals you're eating in a day? When I was young at Sam Sulek's age, a lot of people would literally set the alarm to wake up in the middle of the night to consume protein. They would slam back a protein shake or eat a can of tuna. Now, the research shows it's not smart. You don't need to do this. It's much better to optimize your sleep than to get in the additional benefits of eating protein in the middle of the night. I personally did this myself because we did not know that this was not ideal. But if you wake up to eat, you're going to be interrupting your sleep and it's more important to to get a quality night of sleep than the extra protein. And so although it does benefit you to get up and eat the protein, it's going to hurt you by not allowing you to get a proper night of sleep. I don't feel like I'm missing out by not doing the Stairmaster. I feel like the Stairmaster is just so Cook. hard. Burning the Cook. glutes. This could be nothing further from the truth. He's 100% wrong. The only reason he thinks the Stairmaster is too hard is because he's going at too quick of a pace. Doing the Stairmaster is not going to burn off the glutes. If anything, it could in fact improve the glutes. Oftentimes, bikini competitors and so on, they will specifically choose the Stairmaster because they want to have well-defined glutes. What high-level bikini competitor does not have amazing glutes. Remember, even on his diet, Sam is currently 234.6 pounds. That is a lot of mass. And the heavier you are, the slower you have to move to burn the same number of calories. All he has to do to make up for the fact that he's twice the size of a bikini competitor is go at half the speed. And so by slowing down the cadence, going slower than last time, he can do his cardio at an appropriate pace, likely zone two cardio for him. And remember, zone two cardio is simply a little bit faster than easy cardio, but it's not hard enough to burn you out. You should be feeling good, having to sweat, but still able to carry a conversation. Seated bike's the way to go for me. And by seated bike, he means recumbent bike where he's laying back and the legs are just relaxing and going like this. And so if you've seen my video on the best versus worst forms of cardio, you'll see that the recumbent bike is at the bottom. It's one of the worst. And why is that? It's because it burns the fewest number of calories. You're hardly doing anything. Only your legs are doing this. And so it takes a lot lot longer to burn the same amount of calories as if you were, for example, doing the stepper, doing the Stairmaster, or doing an elliptical, or even a regular bike ride, going outside. So, whatever. I mean, I've been taking my vitamins at random Cook. hours throughout the day. Sam takes his vitamins, B vitamins, and so on in the morning before he goes about his day, but he says as long as you get in, that's what you need. One thing I notice is he's not taking GO2 max, yet he enjoys cardio. He preaches about cardio. GO2 max, the main ingredient, NMN, been shown in scientific studies to dramatically improve your cardio. And so if he were to take this, I'm certain he could burn more calories than last time. Perhaps instead of 300 calories in 30 minutes, he could burn 320, 350, who knows? Or he could reduce his 30 minutes to 25 and burn the same number of calories because he's going faster. Not only that, he would have more energy throughout the day. His neat non-exercise activity thermogenesis calories, that would also go up and he would have more energy for his weightlifting sessions. And so I would strongly recommend Sam Sulik and anyone watching this to click the link in the description, use code Greg, save 10%, give Geo2Max a try. So I'll take my vitamins. I already took a, uh, well, I already dry scooped the creatine. And so he's dry scooping the creatine. I often do that myself. Just put it in my mouth or I mix it in with my pre-workout. As long as you take it five grams a day, that is all you need. Plus a caffeine capsule. I mean, this is the equivalent of my morning coffee, I guess. I don't actually recommend this. He's doing zone two easy cardio, laying back on a recumbent bike. How hard is that? 
Do you really need to leverage the benefits of caffeine to get you through your workout? I don't think so. He should save the caffeine for later on his prep, later in his diet, when he actually needs it. Not only that, Andrew Huberman has stated to wait 90 minutes before you take caffeine in the morning. Wake up, let the sun sign in, let that wake you up, take your time, and save the caffeine for later. In doing so, you won't get the same crash from when you take caffeine, and it'll allow you to have more energy throughout the day. But if you're like me, what I do is I leverage all the benefits of caffeine to enhance my workout. And so before I go to the gym or doing my bike races, I then leverage all the benefits of caffeine by taking my pre-workout right before going to the gym. In doing so, not only the energy, but also the dopamine that's released allows me to enjoy the workout that much more. I'm much more likely to want to train when I'm taking a pre-workout because it makes me feel good. And so why not leverage all the benefits of caffeine to fuel your intensity for the workout you want to train harder than last time. Sit down, pedal, put it at a difficulty where it'll say that it burns 300 calories. And so Sam's plan for doing cardio is he always burns 300 calories in 30 minutes. Now remember, none of these machines are entirely accurate, but if you're using the same machine from day to day, I do believe that that's gonna give you a great guess as to what you're doing. It allows you to track your intensity. And so his goal is to burn 300 calories every 30 minutes. So the way you could gauge that is, or after 10 seconds, how many calories have you burned? So if you can kind of do the math, if you've only burned seven, you gotta up the intensity or pedal quicker. If you burn seven calories every 10 seconds, which is extremely difficult, he would burn a total of 2,520 calories per hour. And so I did the math and what he meant to say was every one minute. And to me, that makes sense. If you're trying to burn 300 calories in 30 minutes, you're trying to burn off 10 calories per minute. 10 times 30 is 300. And so if you notice that you only burnt seven, eight or nine calories in one minute, then you need to pick up the pace. If you burnt 11 or 12 calories, you can then slow down the pace. So by 10 minutes in, you look at the bike, it should be around 100. If it's below 100, go a little bit faster. If it's above 100, you can take your time. But what I would recommend is to progressive overload your cardio in order to become a better butter burner. And what does that mean? It means that you should gradually over time try to burn more calories than last time. Perhaps once a week, rather than burning 300 calories, you try to burn 301 calories, 302, perhaps 305, a little bit more. That way, over the course of months and or years, Sam would be able to burn four maybe 500 calories in the same 30 minutes, or he could choose to burn the same number of calories in less time. And so perhaps in one week, he's burning 300 calories in 29 minutes. The next week, he's burning 300 calories in 29 and a half minutes. That is what's known as progressive overload, and you're doing it in the gym. You're trying to lift heavier weights, get an extra rep, slow down the movement, get better mind-muscle connection, perhaps pause the weight. We're trying to make the exercise harder. That is because we're trying to build more muscle. And so if you're trying to improve your cardio to build up your heart, you're trying to do the same thing. And so if you always burn 300 calories in 30 minutes, you're not going to be progressive overloading and you're not going to improve your cardio. Of course, you're going to maintain it and there's nothing wrong with that. Wouldn't you rather become more efficient, a better butter burner, to have increased VO2 max, to go harder than last time without getting out of breath? And so that next year, the year after, he would be fitter than last time, burning off more calories and be much better at staying lean. He could eat more calories, do the same 30 minutes of cardio, but be eating that much more. And so when it comes down to cutting, he could either do less cardio or eat more calories. And so that is why I can eat so many calories while maintaining single digit body fat. I have become extremely good at doing cardio. I can burn a thousand calories or more on the bike in under an hour. Remember, the amount of calories you're burning relates to the size of your body. The bigger you are, the easier it is to burn calories and the smaller you are, the harder it is to burn your calories. But looking at Sam's physique, 234 pounds of lean muscle, approaching single digit body fat, he should be able to eat a ton of calories while still losing weight. Yet he's on a 2,500 calorie diet. He's eating 460 grams of egg whites for 50 grams of protein and only 10 grams of carbs. It's about 250 calories for breakfast. Yet you watch him drink all that chocolate milk, cinnamon toast crunch, five guys burgers, donuts. But what is he eating now? Yeah, he bulked, it was fun. 6,000 calories a day, let's put it on all the size. 
Do you see what he's doing now? He's doing empty stomach cardio for 30 minutes, followed by eating the egg whites. Who wants to do that? I certainly don't. And so he can listen to Sam Sulik preach about bulking up on junk food, then starving himself on a diet, or... You can listen to Coach Greg. I know which person I listen to. And the answer to that is I'd listen to both. I'd listen to both. And I'd pick the best of both worlds and do what makes you happy. I'm not saying 300 calories in half an hour is the best method. That's just how I go about it. And so you want to know how many calories you're actually burning. It all goes by watts. And so what you do is you take the calories you're burning per hour. And so if he's doing 300 in 30 minutes, that's 600 in one hour. Divide that by 3.6. It equals 167 watts. So that is the power he's putting into the pedals. How many calories is burning? And so if you're a smaller rider, for example, if you're half of Sam Sulek's size, rather than burning 300 calories in 30 minutes, you're probably going to burn 100. 150 calories. That would be equal to about 83 watts. And if you're curious, some of the faster riders on Zwift, which I race on, do well over double 166 watts. And so people are riding for an hour 350 plus watts. And so imagine the calories these people are burning. And some of these guys are going on three, four, and five hour rides, burning 5,000 plus calories during a single bike ride. And so no wonder cyclists can eat so much. You all think... IFBB Pro professional bodybuilders are eating the most. No, it's those skinny, tiny little guys in the Tour de France. They're eating way more than any IFBB Pro bodybuilder ever will. There's no need to like read too much into your day by day weight. I'd say you'd want to look at your week by week. And so Sam, like Coach Greg, he goes by his weekly weight, not the weight he is on the daily. I take the median weight. You cross out the highs and the lows. And so, for example, he was 234.1 pounds today, but 236 pounds the other day. And so people are saying, why are you fluctuating so much? Your day by day weight is going to fluctuate immensely based on how much water is in your body. That is normal. You cross off the highs, 236, the lows, 234, and perhaps the median, the middle number was 235. And so you go by 235 pounds and every week you compare it to that. And so next week he could perhaps lose up to 1% of his body weight, which would be 2.3 pounds. And so if he loses more than 2.3 pounds, he's probably losing too quickly. And my suggestion to lose slower than last time, a half a percent per week. That way you're not likely going to lose any muscle. If you're going on a cut and you're losing more than 1% of your body weight a week, you're likely losing some muscle tissue, not good. You spent all that time bulking up. And so why would you want to lose muscle in the process? This is why I preach to main gain. You slowly put muscle over time, but at no point are you ever losing any. And so Sam is gaining muscle, then losing some. Gaining and losing versus you can slowly gain the entire time. Both methods are effective. And so pick the one you want. I just believe mine to be healthier because you're not yo-yo dieting. You're not bulking on a bunch of junk food and then cutting on a very low calorie diet. I believe it's better to be somewhere in the middle. He's at 6,000 calories a day, now at 2,500. Why not just eat 4,000 to 4,500 all the time? He could always slowly be putting on muscle. Then his reflection in the mirror would always be what he wants it to be. I'm not saying single digit body fat. I'm saying a healthy body fat percentage for you. Okay, so... We're starting to get a solid sweat in. Just paused at like the 20 minute mark to get the camera going. And to me, that means he's in either zone one or zone two, very easy cardio. He's carrying on a conversation with ease. He's saying he's sweating. I notice a little bit of sweating, but also notice he's wearing a sweater and he does not have a fan. I could not imagine doing cardio for 20 minutes without having a fan. Based on what I'm seeing, he's doing very easy cardio. I don't even know if it's zone two. He could perhaps go a little bit harder, but he doesn't need to. He's getting in plenty of cardio, doing 30 minutes, perhaps six days a week. That would be 180 minutes in total. 150 minutes of cardio a week, that's all you need. And so Sam is doing plenty. He doesn't need to go any harder. I don't know his heart rate. I don't know his VO2 max. I don't know his anaerobic threshold. I don't know anything about him but I do know that if you can easily talk while doing a bike ride I'm clearly I'm sweating so clearly something is going on while wearing a sweater you perhaps could go a little bit harder and so why not try and burn 305 calories instead of 300 or instead of doing 30 minutes to get 300 calories why not do 300 calories in 29 minutes I don't want to do cardio it's so Cook. boring you have access to the most Cook. 
highly technological shit. Why not watch one of Sam Sulik's videos? You do your cardio, listen to him chat. And if you don't like Sam, you can watch myself. You can watch any other YouTuber. Just keep yourself occupied, learn something, read a book. And you don't even need to use technology. You could go outside, walk in nature, explore the world. Oh, cardio, I don't like it. Well, learn to like it. Learn to occupy yourself. You can occupy your mind with other things. Distract yourself. You don't like cardio. Find a way to like it. Watch a movie. Watch a video. Listen to some songs, some music. Take some caffeine before you go for a walk. Find a partner. Join a club. Just stop making excuses and do your cardio. And so please get in that 150 minutes of cardio a week. And if you need extra energy and motivation, GO2 Max. Don't forget to get that. Click the link in the description. Code Greg, 10% off. Subscribe. Click the bell button. Comment to boost the algorithm. Don't forget to watch one of those two bloops. And of course, the cookbooks, the training books, um, other cookbooks, and protein bars, all kinds of stuff. Click the link in the description. We have so many different things at the website, including a Harder Than Last Time clothing line and a Circle Diet book train. Just get all of it, or at least get something. Go and check it out. And until next time, I am out.